So once you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to John chapter 15. Here we're, re we're reminded that Jesus grew up in an agricultural community because he gives them a parable. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He takes away every branch that does not bear fruit in me. He prunes every branch that bears fruit so it will bear more fruit. You are clean already because of the word that I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. Now, I've heard plenty of times a preacher come up here and say, now you see, you don't want to be that branch that's cast off. <laughs> but listen to what Jesus is saying. He says, you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. There's an incentive here says, I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit because apart from me, you can accomplish nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown out like a branch and dries up. And such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire and are burned up. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. My father is honored by this that you bear much fruit and show that you're my disciples. Here Jesus tells us that our life, our every good thing that we do comes because he taught us how to do good. Because his words abide in us and show us the right way to go. In Galatians, Paul very much leans on this parable. In chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, he says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I want you to think for a moment about these things as I say them again. And think, do you have them? Do you know people who have these traits, these qualities, are they Christians? Think about it again as I say love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Think of each one of those. Who do you know who embodies those things? Do you embody those things? Paul tells us against such things, there is no law. Now, Jesus was talking about farming and vines. Paul here is talking about the law. He's talking to a very different community than the one that Jesus was preaching to. And we can see that in Romans chapter 7. And I promise this is the last time you're turning pages here. <laughs> Romans chapter 7, he is talking to a very different crowd. You see, he's in Rome. And they're not farmers in Rome. <laughs> they're warriors in Rome. They don't farm. They don't grow vines. They have other people grow vines. That's why they conquered the world. So they didn't have to do that hard work anymore. <laughs> but they very much understand the law. They very much understand that there is a set of rules that society is governed by and you have to follow the rules. And so he doesn't talk to them about agriculture. He talks to them about the rules. He says in verse 21, so I find the law that when I want to do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being. But I see a different law in my members, waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that is in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. And I think we can all 
empathize with this, that even though we want to do what's right, even though we want to do what's good, we always fall short of it. And Paul is saying that there is a law, sure, and it condemns this sinful behavior. And that is the law that applies to my flesh. But my soul, my soul is something completely different. That is what is owned by God. And that is what bears the fruit of the Spirit. So think of yourself again. Are you sinful? But if you are, do you also bear fruit? How can that be? Once again, Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. We continue into Romans 8. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. This is Paul's thesis. This is the turning point of his sermon. There is no condemnation. I want you to hold on to that. For the law of the life-giving spirit in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God achieved what the law could not do because it was weakened through the flesh. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and concerning sin, the condemned sin in the flesh, so that the righteous requirement of the law may be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. If we walk according to the spirit, we will sow a crop of virtue. Even though we continue sinning, even though we must always come back to repentance, God is working miracles through us. And that is what we see in the Spirit. Paul says, for those who live according to the flesh have their outlook shaped by the things of the flesh. Those are the people who look to the Bible as a rule book and say, well, it says right here in Leviticus that shrimp are evil. And don't you know that it's the wrong day of the week for that kind of activity, and so we can't do that. And, oh, and by the way, you can't date that person either. It's totally unacceptable. They live by a rule book. But their rule book is meant to rule the flesh. And Paul says we have cast that aside. And so we can't live by the rule book anymore. We live by the Spirit. For those who live according to the Spirit have their outlook shaped by the things of the Spirit. For the outlook of the flesh is death, but the outlook of the Spirit is life and peace because the outlook of the flesh is hostile to God. For it does not submit to the law of God, nor is it able to do so. After all, how many of you have given up shellfish? <laughs> how many of you drove yesterday, worked on the Sabbath? Nor are we able to really do so. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Keeping the rules will never make God happy. But guess what? Bearing fruit does. When we become more like Christ through the Spirit, when we bear those fruit of love and joy and peace and kindness, when we put on those things of the Spirit, that brings joy to God. Turn all the way to verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose, because those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that his son would be called the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Look at that. Now, the language is confusing, but I want you to understand he's talking to a people who are concerned about law, and he's using some very strong language here. We know that we're saved, not because we can follow all the rules, not because we understand every word in every verse, but because Christ died for us. He came to this world to teach us a better way to live, 
and he died to make sure that we could live it eternally and abundantly. Paul is driving that point home here. He says that we should be conformed to the image of the Son, that we may be his brothers and sisters. You see, Paul doesn't want us to be under the law because under the law means that we are countrymen. We are one nation. But Paul knows that nations fall apart all the time. Nations go out and war with other nations. They establish colonies. They do terrible things. We're not a nation. We're a family. And that is what Paul is saying here, that we are brothers and sisters, younger siblings to Christ our Lord. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Think about this. Have you ever dated someone who was in the closet? Have you ever been someone's dirty little secret? It feels pretty terrible, doesn't it? So I want you to think about that for a moment. And now hear this. Those he predestined, he called. Those he called, he justified. And those he justified, he glorified. There is not one of us that will not stand on that judgment day when Christ comes running to us. When Christ says, welcome home, because he's done it in this life. Because guess what? You're already here. God already called you. You already experienced God running to you as the prodigal son. Because God has never been ashamed of us. In verse 31, what then shall we say about these things, all us lawbreakers, after all? If God is for us, who can be against us? Indeed, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, freely give us all things? You see, he didn't just call us to be friends of Jesus. He called us to be brothers and sisters, to be heirs to the promise. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will trouble or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? You see, I know we've experienced that at other churches. Mm. We've all been called things that we shouldn't have. And that's what's so beautiful about this passage. As it is written, for your sake, we encounter death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we have complete victory through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor heavenly rulers, nor things that are present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So heirs, with the pro heirs of the promise, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God loves us, who can condemn us? By what law can they measure it? God's law? He has already set it aside for those of us who are walking in his spirit. So today, I ask you to work on those virtues of the spirit. And those things that you fall short of, try not to worry so much about them. Because nothing in this world will separate us from the love of God. You are already called as sons and daughters and heirs promise of life eternal. What will separate us in all creation from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord? Amen? Amen. Amen.